is a radioactive waste specialist at Beyond Nuclear. It's an organization that aims to educate the public about nuclear power. He joins us now from Brattleboro, Vermont. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So these are very low levels of radioactivity. That's what we're being told. Do you have any concerns about it? Well, certainly so. There's been tremendous releases from Fukushima Daiichi that continue to this day, some 300 tons per day of radioactive water pouring into the ocean. And granted, uh, these may be relatively low levels, but this is artificial hazardous radioactivity. And if it's showing up on the North American coastline, you have to worry about the entire ocean. We aren't worried uh, as people necessarily about the levels here, but what about for wildlife? You mentioned uh, if it shows up along the entire North American coast or the West Coast, what about the wildlife? What about uh, things along that coast, trees, that kind of thing? Well, certainly one of the big health hazards that we have to worry about being on the top of the food chain as we are is the bioconcentration, the bioaccumulation of this artificial radioactivity in the seafood supply. So that's going to be a pathway of exposure to human beings. And uh, this uh, situation could get a lot worse if Tokyo Electric is allowed to dump uh, some 280 million liters of highly radioactive wastewater into the ocean. And they, they supposedly will filter some of the radioactive poisons out, but one poison called tritium, which is radioactive hydrogen, is not filterable. And their plan is to dump that intentionally into the ocean. Have we ever seen anything like this before that we could compare it to? No, this is unprecedented uh, damage to the ocean. I mean, Chernobyl did have releases into the Dnieper River, which flowed into the Black Sea. But these releases on a daily basis right now are unprecedented directly into the Pacific Ocean. Do you anticipate that the levels will get higher as we see more of this water make its way uh, towards the west coast of North America? Well, those 300 tons per day are each and every day. So that's going to be a continuous stream of radioactivity from Fukushima Daiichi into the ocean. But if Tokyo Electric and the central government of Japan get away with this large scale dumping of the highly radioactive stored water, that would be a major assault on the ocean. It's treating it like it's a radioactive industrial sewer. But it's the origin of life and it's uh, the home of uh, the seafood supply. So what should they do with this waste? What can they do with it? Well, they are storing, as we speak, some 280,000 tons of highly radioactive wastewater. And granted, the storage needs to be secured. It's uh, very shoddily built. But it needs to be stored until, for example, the hazard of the tritium dissipates, which will take some 120 years. So they can continue to store it, but it sounds like that's not the best alternative either. They need to do it in a more secure location. Of course, the site is vulnerable to big earthquakes and tsunamis, and the storage is located right on the ocean side. Wow. At this point. All right. Kevin Camps is joining us. Uh, he is with a group uh, called Beyond Nuclear, Nuclear. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. Thank you for having me. We already know that radiation has been detected off of British Columbia's coast, but now for the first time, radioactive isotype, isotypes from the Fukushima Daiichi disaster have turned up, and it's been more than four years after an earthquake triggered a meltdown at the facility. CTV's Jet Bassey joins us live now from Eucolette uh, on Vancouver Island with a closer look at the details and the discovery. Uh, Jet, what are you learning? What exactly was found? So far right now, we've noticed the fact that scientists are saying that the Fukushima disaster, those isotopes, those man-made isotopes, C-134, have now arrived onto the shore here in Canada, especially here in Yukulit. On February 19th, a sample was taken from the Canadian government dock. That sample was taken by INFORM, a local volunteer group here, in conjunction with the, with the University of Victoria. It was sent, that sample, to Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in the U.S., where it was discovered that that water sample, that seawater sample, had cesium-134 in it. The same, sample, the same radiation levels or the same radiation isotopes that are found in Fukushima that was released there into the water in Japan. All right, so what does this mean for residents? Can they swim in the water? They shouldn't drink the water? What are you learning? At the moment right now, scientists are saying that, you know what, the water is safe. It's, it's not will not affect human life or sea life or the oceans 
ecosystem. So at the moment, it's water safe, but there are some concerns here because Tufino and Euculet are tourist attractions here. So when you hear the words radiation, ra radiation, and uh, the idea of radioactive water contaminant water being here in this area, there is some fear that installs to someone. So at the moment right now, we're going to be seeing a lot more. The peak will come for radiation in about a few months, and that's when science, the scientists will do some more testing to determine will the levels and if they've increased or not. And what are experts telling you as far as what they have to do to actually clean all of this up, if they can? The peak will happen in a few months, but they determined the fact that in 2020, it will dissipate. It'll, it'll, go, it'll circle out by itself due with the ocean currents, and it will filter back into the ocean, and, and it'll go away by itself by 2020. And so how exactly did they come to find all of this? I mean, is this something that they're testing regularly in that area or all along the B.C. coast? Or was it that it, something looked a little bit strange to uh, a resident? How did they find all this out? Well, the scientists were actually anticipating this to happen. So what they, ha what they did was they created a group, a volunteer group, in form. And this volunteer group collected samples up and down the coast here. And when they collected samples for the past four years, they sent the samples, they tested the samples. And what they determined was the fact that, yes, the disaster from Fukushima, the radioactivity has arrived here. It was something that they anticipated, but they do anticipate that this, by 2020, should go away by itself in the, in the ocean currents by itself. CTV's Jet Bassey letting us know about this radioactive isotopes detected off the coast of BC. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Jet. Japanese officials are trying to strike a balance between nuclear and renewable energy. Before the Fukushima disaster, nuclear energy provided more than a quarter of the nation's electricity. Right now, all the nation's nuclear plants are offline, but government officials want to bring some of them back. Officials at the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry have been consulting experts from a variety of fields. They want to come up with what they think will be an optimal energy mix by the year 2030. They plan to reduce dependency on nuclear power to the lower 20% range. Before the 2011 accident, nuclear power provided 28% of the country's electricity. And the officials say renewable energy will eventually provide more power than nuclear power. Renewable sources currently account for 21%. The officials are aiming for a limited cut in nuclear energy so as to contain greenhouse gas emissions. The ministry will present a draft proposal to Japan's ruling parties by the end of this month. People from a town near Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are a step closer to returning home. They've gotten permission to stay overnight in their own houses for the first time in four years. Japanese government officials have given people in Naraha the go-ahead. About 7,500 of them have been living in other areas since the nuclear accident. Most of the town is still designated as an evacuation zone. But officials plan to lift the order later this year. Shigeru Yoshida and his wife, Nobuko, have been living in temporary housing in another part of Fukushima. They brought along food, water, and other daily necessities for their first night at home. We've finally come this far after four years. I don't know what will happen from here on out, but we've taken half a step forward. Officials say just over 180 out of about 2,700 households have applied for permission to stay overnight. Many people have expressed concerns about radiation. They also want local infrastructure to be rebuilt. Officials say they will hold a series of meetings to explain what the government plans to do, and then they'll set a date for lifting the evacuation order. <laughs> 